Cynthia Bautista. Hi everybody, my name is Sheridan Casares, and we're super excited that you've joined us for our Club de Recetas, the Chocolate edition, um, as part of our Vida Latina series here at the Long Beach Public Library. Uh, our Vida Latina series is going to run from September 15th to October 15th, and we're going to be uh, doing virtual programming that's going to showcase Latin American culture, art, food, stories, uh, and also a couple of teen workshops as well. So we're super excited for you to be here. All the programs are going to be streamed live um, or live-ish on Facebook uh, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. for more, the more grown-up crowd and every Saturday at 1 p.m. for the kids. So let's get right into it. Cynthia here is going to talk about uh, chocolate history. I'm going to share with you a little about where chocolate comes from. So chocolate as we know it comes from the cacao seeds, the cocoa beans. These actually grow in a cacao pod, in a cacao tree. The cacao pods are a fruit that kind of looks like the size of a Nerf, a Nerf ball, the size and shape of a Nerf ball. These are dried, they're fermented, and then they're ground and mixed with milk and sugar to make the milk chocolate that we know today. Um, but we didn't always eat chocolate the way that we eat it now. Um, Originally, we thought that chocolate came from Mesoamerica, which is Central America and like the South of Mexico area. But there is new evidence that shows that chocolate actually came from the Amazon area in South America. And we don't know much about how they used it back then, but we do know that they did have it as a drink because they have found um, evidence of cacao in their pots. So it is believed that they brought it up north eventually and that the Olmecs, um, adopted it into their culture. The Olmecs um, didn't really eat chocolate the way we do now. To them, it was more of a religious ritual and they used it for medicinal reasons. Uh, the Olmecs called chocolate, the cacao seeds, um, cacaoa. So that's where the term cacao comes from. And eventually, they um, taught what they needed to the Maya that used it in their culture as well. The Maya drank the cacao um, as a frothy, spicy drink. And actually the word chocolate means um, bitter water. So it was more of a bitter, spicy drink. Um, and also they did not drink it as an everyday. It was more of a ceremonial ritual and only the elites got to drink it. The Aztecs on the other hand also used cacao, but they it was more of an everyday drink. Um, well, it was also a celebratory drink, but everybody got to drink it, not just the elites. It was also very valuable to them, and they used cacao seeds as money. And one cacao bean actually bought them one tomato. And I believe it was 20 cacao beans would buy them a rabbit. So they had value. And they actually counterfeited these. Um, so they would empty it out and they would um, fill it with sand and they would sell them as counterfeits. So they were very, very valuable, but they were a little more common than the Maya and the Omex that only used it for ceremonies and for special rituals. And now Sheridan is going to tell us a little bit about how we use chocolate today. We don't drink it as a bitter, um, frothy drink anymore. Now it's a sweet, um, a sweet snack. Um, so he's going to tell us a little bit more about how we still use it in our cuisine. Yeah, so chocolate, chocolate is still foundational um, in a lot of the different foods that we have in Latin America and also here in the States. Um, so some of the stuff that ends up happening with chocolate is that we try to make it into sweet treats, obviously. Um, so you have your regular candy bars, you have Carlos Quinto, which is super popular in Latin America, but over here we have Hershey's and stuff like that. Um, oftentimes it's for hot chocolate, uh, we have companies like Ibarra or Abuelitas who add uh, sugar and um, other flavorings to it, like cinnamon and stuff, to make it into like a hot chocolate drink. Um, it comes in powdered form, it also comes in the tablets, um, which we'll show you how to use later, um, and then it also comes as sort of like chocomil, which is a really popular drink um, in childhood and beyond, for me included. Um, and then it's also used in atole, we have a chocolate flavored atole, which is a drink made from corn. Um, and it's typically drank on like cold days or you know for breakfast and that kind of stuff. Um, some of the more savory stuff that we've got going on, or actually before I move on to the savory stuff, um, there's a company called Choco Mel Air 
that does like a sort of uh, meltable chocolate for dipping, and so we'll show you how to use this later in just a minute. Um, some of the more savory stuff that we've got going on is uh, what you guys probably have heard of as mole. So mole is a sauce that's made from, a paste or a sauce that's made from a chocolate base, but it also has other, like tons of other spices and chiles in it to be able to, um, here you can see it as a paste, and what you end up doing is you mix it with either chicken broth or other stuff to be able to make it into more of a sauce that you would then put on chicken or other, other meats. Um, another variety that's really popular is the Doña Maria variety. This one comes a little bit more hydrated and it's actually got some oil suspended in there. And so you can use this to make some easy, easy mole at home because the process for making mole from scratch is incredibly tedious and really, really long. Uh, we also use it in uh, baking. So as you can see, everybody knows about the chocolate conchas. These are bread that's sweetened along with um, a sort of confection that includes chocolate that is then layered on top to be able to make a shell pattern. Super, super famous and iconic bread um, in Latin America. Um, and then um, I want to share with you a little bit about some of the politics of chocolate too in the modern day. So chocolate, um, cocoa tends to be harvested in countries that have weaker labor laws and so oftentimes um, some recent exposés have come out where they found that cocoa is being harvested by child labor or uh, even slave labor. Um, a lot of, you know, aside from the labor practices, um, because the cocoa plant is so uh, susceptible to disease and to pests, oftentimes they end up having to use a ton of pesticides in order to be able to farm it. And so that has its own environmental consequences. Um, so if you can, uh, try to stick to chocolate that's fair trade and that avoids um, companies that use you know, immoral labor practices and uh, damaging environmental practices. Um, and and I wanted to share that we do have lots of books in the library uh, where you can learn some recipes about how to cook with chocolate. There's also some good ones about the history of food that talk about how chocolate has influenced um, the foods all over the world. Um, how you know they, it was brought into Europe and transformed into like a really popular meal. So there's there some really good books that we recommend that you check out to little, learn a little bit more about chocolate and about chocolate recipes. And now we're gonna show you how to make a couple of different snacks using some of the um, products that we have here. So join us as Evelyn shows us how to make some choco bananos and some Mexican hot chocolate. And now Evelyn is gonna show us how to make a couple of different um, treats with chocolate. The first one we're gonna make is the choco banano. This is a Central American treat that is made with uh, two ingredients, bananas and chocolate. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to freeze the bananas overnight. Um, and then when you're ready to make the choco bananas, you're gonna melt the chocolate, the packet of chocolate in a double boiler. So you are gonna boil the water, you add the package to the water until it melts. Once it's melted, you pour it into a jar where you can, um, that's big enough for you to stick the bananas in. So we have the melted chocolate here and Evelyn is gonna dip the banana into the chocolate. You let the excess chocolate drip off and that's it. Once it cools off, it'll harden. If you want to add any peanuts or any coconuts or sprinkles, you can do that as well. Uh, what you would do is you dip the banana in and before the chocolate, um, cools off, you want to roll it in peanuts or in sprinkles. Uh, and we made a sample with sprinkles to show you how that would look. So these are very easy to make and they're a great summer treat. Now we're going to show you how to make some Mexican hot chocolate. For this recipe, we're going to use milk and some chocolate tablets or powder. For this recipe, you're going to add the milk into the pot. In this case, we're gonna make two cups of milk. So each tablet is actually um, good for four cups, but since we're only making two cups, we're gonna use half a tablet of chocolate. You can put that in the pot. We're gonna pretend that we're on a stove and that we're boiling the milk. And you can um, mix it with a molinillo, if you have a molinillo, and that will make the drink frothy. 
You can also use powder if you prefer. It is easier, it melts faster. Um, so now we have the option of making it with powder. Um, once it's, the milk is boiled, you can serve it on your favorite mug. You can enjoy the hot chocolate with a concha, with a bolillo. You can also take the bolillo, cut it in half, add some butter, and toast it to have a warm snack with your hot chocolate. And you can enjoy it on a cool day. So we showed you how to make a summer treat and a winter treat. We hope you enjoyed these recipes. And join us again for our next video Latina. Thank you.